The reason I think everybody should get whole life insurance has nothing to do with the technicals, but it's because of the process of you going down that process of, of saving money, building your foundation, making sure that it's a self-completing plan, that your family will be taken care of, that it's gonna, that, but the whole process in that journey is gonna force you to become who you need to be with your money to live the life that you wanna live. What's going on, everybody? I'm Chris Noggle, and welcome back to the Money School Podcast. Today's episode, I'm going to bring on a friend of mine, a friend that is in the exact same business as I am, the business of helping people take back control of their money. As a matter of fact, I got to read this because this is epic how he puts this. He said, this is his mission. I am relentlessly dedicated to helping people reach financial freedom as quickly as possible. I believe the financial system is broken. Yes, very broken. It is set up for the Main Street investors to fail. Folks, all of you watching this, you are the Main Street investors. The system is set up to fail you, and it will. And if you wait any more, if you wait too much longer, you're going to see the wrath of what we're about to talk to you about. Chris Kirkpatrick from Life 180, welcome to the show. What's happening, man? Awesome to be here. I'm happy to have you here, man. We, we're going to have a lot of fun today. Yeah, man. So I'm, you know, I'm excited. Real quick, I, I just got to get this right out. So you're actually, <laughs> you're, you're getting, you're hanging everything up. We were talking about this offline, but you're hanging everything up. You're yeah. renting your house, you're selling off all your belongings, and you're moving to well, we'll call it paradise yeah. on a venture. This 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 vision, this dream you had. Can you just talk about that for a second? Like, how did that start? And 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 it yeah. happened so quickly. Like now you're just you're just literally going 180 uh, degrees, total pivot. Yeah. Well, hey, that's with the name, right? So now, like, listen, I I just am a believer. When you find opportunity um, that makes sense, you got to track it down and you got to just follow it. I just feel like. God has kind of put this in front of us, you know, and and uh, it wasn't something that we were looking for. My wife and I launched a private equity fund together. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of background and history of real estate investing, and we've done stuff ourselves. And so we just kind of thought it was time to get into the space to launch a fund, raise some money. Um, but but ultimately, the the deal itself, the the project, the program, whatever you want to call it itself, the the property that we're we're working with, um, it just. I don't know how to describe it. It just found us. And it was uh, the craziest part about it was th that we walked into this place six, seven months before we even had the opportunity to buy it before, you know, we even realized it was available. The first time that my wife and I walked into there was because our developer that we were working on another project with was like, I want to show you the place that I proposed to my fiance. And so we're like, oh, that's cool. So we walk in and literally the hair on both my wife's and I arms stood up and we were like, Oh my gosh, like this place is magical. Like, and so then long story short, we left and we were like, how do we buy this place? And it was just too much for us to do personally. And, and it, we, you know, like it just wasn't going to happen. We came back six months later and I had launched the fund, but we didn't know what we were going to invest it in. We just, we just knew we had the fund and I, and I wanted to kind of do that. Uh, and, and that was kind of like the next phase of, of our, professional life. And um, we went back down there and I went to uh, the guy who like controls all the real estate in the area basically. And was like, Hey man, like if you were coming down with capital, what would be the, the best opportunity? And he literally showed me the hotel that, you know, we just fell in love with. And we we're like, Oh my gosh, is he punking us? Because like, does he realize like how we feel about this place? And so um, it's just, it's, it's literally just, uh, it feels like a dream come true. Um, Going down there, like I, I always kind of tell people, my my first real estate mentor, you know, told us like the key is to invest in the path of progress, and if you understand what's going on down there, um, and that there's more uh, foreign domestic investment going into the Dominican than any other place right now in uh, the Caribbean or Central America, that it's it's growing like like just crazy, and most of the tourism right now is in Punta Cana and Santo Domingo. Punta Cana. And that was it. Punta Cana. Okay, cool. So, so that's where you want surfing. Yeah. So, so we're about like a couple hours north around the north shore of the island from Punta Cana. And if you've been to Punta Cana, which is like all inclusive resort world, right? We are basically the antithesis of that. We are in the jungle, 
on the North shore of the Island. And it's basically like Bali of the Western hemisphere. And it's like, it's amazing, man. It, um, and, and, you know, like, I, I don't know how to describe it. It just, we, it, we found it, it fell into our lap and, um, it's in the path of progress. The, the Dominican government is investing a hundred million dollars, uh, into roads and infrastructure. They got a new airport going in near us. They have a cruise ship port 20 minutes away from us. Like, and so it's, it's just one of those things. We have a, a, a five to seven year plan to build it out, allow the uh, progress to come to us, allow the infrastructure to, to develop, ride the wave up. Uh, cash flow it really well compared to anything in the United States. I mean, that's really what ultimately brought us down there in the first place. We wanted to to get involved in more real estate investing in the U.S., but we couldn't find anything that provided the cash flow and the potential appreciation and everything that we were looking for with the economy the way it is and with debt in the U.S., asset prices just totally inflated, the uncertainty of the economy, the uncertainty of the politics, the, you know, just all that stuff that goes into the equation, how crazy cool is it to be able to go get involved in a project in paradise on the ocean that's going to cash flow 20 plus percent and we're going to be able to do it with no debt because you're able to develop with third like with developing uh nation costs you know and and that's amazing but we're able to charge u.s based rates because it's all u.s tourists or u.s canadian european you know so it's great it's just amazing you know and so you know, I do have, I mean, I know, you know, I watch a lot of your stuff too. And I know we both have the same concerns about like the economy and like what the hell is going to happen. Right. And so it's, it's also really nice because, you know, we're getting dual residency and we're, we're going to, you know, have kind of another place to go. And they've given us tax, uh, tax exemptions for being down there for 10 years and all these different things. And so it, uh, it's all happened really, really fast and it's, uh, it's kind of not so, but, um, it's exciting. That's the thing is it really has been fast. And that's, <laughs> that's why I wanted to get that right out of the way. Cause uh, yeah. you know, this podcast is going to go by fast cause we're going to get into some stuff and, and Let's you're right, Chris, we, we definitely share the same sentiment about the economy, about the the politics, even about geopolitical concerns, you know, with population totally. and everything else. So, you know, yeah. like when I, when I said it earlier in the show, folks, any of you listening, like we're, we do the exact same thing. We both have, yeah. have, have agencies that basically do the infinite banking concepts. Some of you are probably like, why would you bring a competitor on <laughs> your show? Well, I don't know. I had Caleb on the other day. I had Garrett Gunderson on not long ago. They're all in my space because here's the thing. Yeah. It, it, and all of you should learn from this. Like if you go through life with a scarcity mindset, you're going to always limit the amount that you can have and the amount of people's problems that you can solve. And your wealth will always be measured by the amount of problems that you solve for somebody else. So yeah. if you just go through life scarcity thinking, oh, they're competition, I'm not having them on my show. Believe me, that's the case. And we're going to talk about some scarcity minded people in this industry in just a second. <laughs> and, you know, and then we're going to we're going to get into that bag. But in this space, and I'm not saying all of it, but like all of us that have been doing this for a while, practicing the infinite banking concept, teaching the infinite banking concept, showing people how to take back control, man, we all are all abundant mindset because we we just want to help people and we can do yeah. more together than we can separate. And that's one thing I love about this little I, and it, it, we didn't even try to do this. It sort of just happened. Oh, yeah. Like, in, in, and it's it's what needs to happen. I think I think the deal is like, whether it's you, Devin, Caleb, me, Garrett, like, I think what, what what's happened is we have to stick together uh, if we don't. And and I'm I'm a big believer in the collaboration, not competition. You know, I'd rather, you know, I, I have no, like, listen, we both have the same beliefs, but we both have different personalities. We have different ways of communicating. And like some people are going to resonate with you. Some people are going to resonate with me. Some people are going to resonate with Devin and Caleb and like Garrett and like, and that's awesome. Like, as long as people do this, like, that's what matters the most. And the reality is for every one of us, there's 30 IUL agents that are out bastardizing the industry and, and making it horrible. So if we don't stick together, we all lose, period. You're absolutely correct. And, and I'm glad you got it out of the way. IUL. How many of you know what that <laughs> word means? I-U-L. Well, let me tell you, it's a product in the insurance industry called an indexed universal life. I have made a shirt and I, I can't believe I haven't given you this shirt. It's got a picture of a unicorn on it and underneath it nice. says IUL and it says imaginary unicorn life. The nice. reason I say that is all IUL illustrations pretty much are an imaginary, fictitious, beautiful white and pink rainbow unicorn. Yeah, they don't 
they they just don't work. And I, 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 I can't believe like I put a lot of content out just like you do about IULs and, and uh -huh. I just did more. And everyone I do, like I get more comments on it than any other video I put out. And they're all hate. Yeah. But what these idiots that are scarcity mindset don't understand is all they're doing is helping me uh -huh. grow by hating. You know, and it, it, it I think it's such a great thing. But, you know. I don't want to get into too much of the the negative foo foo stuff about IUL and whole life. Sure. All I want to do is I want to know, like you have more knowledge about IULs. I, I would say there's you and there's this one other guy mm -hmm. saw spoke who have more knowledge about that product than just about anybody else. So mm -hmm. how did you get that knowledge about Index Universal Life? Like, you, did you just sit down and study <laughs> the contract like over and over again? Uh, it was slowly. Um, ironically, I got into the life insurance business in 2009. Um, and when I joined the business, I was a, an IUL agent. Um, I was a raving advocate for it. Uh, I I was with uh, the top. I Well, at the time, it wasn't the top, but now it's the number one IUL company in the country. There were, I think, number four at the time. So I grew through the ranks, went from being an agent to a manager to the director of business development for the company. And um you know, in that process, it's just one of those things you just learn more and more and more. My job was to go around the country, recruit agents, teach agents how to sell it, teach them how to build their business, teach them how to recruit to it and all that stuff. And uh, and and the more I learned, the more I had to start having uh, annual policy reviews that started, you know, the policies got more and more mature. And then you start realizing that they're not performing the way they should be. And I knew me, I knew my ethics. I was designing them the right way. I was, I was even putting in non-commissionable premium and doing all this stuff right that you could, you know, have them perform as optimally as possible, taking big commission cuts to do it the right way. You know, all the things that everybody says to do in a properly structured policy and they weren't performing, they, they weren't, um, adding up. And so I started asking questions and, uh, Long story short, I ended up having a conversation with an actuary, which, you know, is really hard to get access to if you understand anything about how uh, insurance companies kind of barricade their actuaries, so, so to speak. And, um, you know, I was just basically told Chris, like, because my, my, my question was, listen, we, this company specifically, I'm like, we've been a, a mutual whole life company for, for, you know, 160 years at the time. It was back, you know, they started in 1848. And, and I was like, so if that's the case, like, why are we switching to IUL? Like, why this big pivot? And he's like, well, Chris, like, you know, we're coming out of the recession and our, our actuaries and our managers, fund managers, like see us going into this long, low-term interest rate environment. They don't see it getting any better. That's going to put a lot of stress on the general fund. So we need to pivot our focus away from whole life where all of the stress is on the company to meet the guarantees. And we're going to start selling IUL because we need to shift the risk from us to the to the insured, to the to the policyholders. And I'm like, isn't that the opposite of why we're selling people on what to do? Like, like it, that seems totally incongruent with with my sales pitch. Like, I just something doesn't make sense. And he's like, well, just look into it. And so that comment really basically lit the fire under me to be like, okay something's not right. This isn't, I'm not doing what I think I'm doing. And so I went down the rabbit hole. I interviewed a lot of people. I questioned a lot of people. I did my own third party research and I became obsessed with understanding the internal movements and mechanisms of how IULs work. Where are they good? Where are they bad? Where, where are they really bad? Where are the risks? How can you mitigate the risks? All these things. And at the end of the day, I, I live my life through the, through the lens of, of a, a really simple decision-making process. Uh, of and that process is what's the upside, what's the downside? Can I live with the downside? And when I started looking at the downside of IUL, I was like, "Holy shit, I can't do this anymore." Yep. And one thing I'll tell you about insurance yeah. companies, like, listen, like that's our business, it's our lifeblood, and, and yeah. I won't name any names, but at the end of the day, they will protect themselves. So yeah. if you're an agent and you're just doing everything you've been taught, you're selling IULs because that's everything they've taught. And then all of a sudden things go bad, like recession hits. And all of a sudden, all these yeah. policies that have shown, you know, five to 7% static returns across the board, never going to yeah. change, always going to be this because yeah. the average return in the market's this. And then all of a sudden you start having some fluctuations in the markets. Oh, kind of like we're having right now. And then all of a sudden you start wondering why things yeah. aren't working. 
you're going to be the one that goes down as the agent, not the company. The company's just going to be like, well, you should have read about this hypothetical. It's, well, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the reality, man, is IULs have been bailed out by the greatest bull run of all time. Like the, the, all the 100%. all the marketing about this IUL, about it, all the upside potential. I created the IUL challenge just to prove that there is no upside potential. We just came through the greatest bull run of all time. And yet IULs over the past decade have not performed up to illustrated value. Now, maybe you'll find one out of 100 policies that like barely matched up to what they were illustrated. But if 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 you're buying this product that's sold on upside potential, downside protection, predictable, safe growth, yet w- only one of them out of 100 actually did what it said it would do on a conservative illustration during the greatest bull run of all time. If you can't capture the upside potential in the greatest bull run of all time, what the hell is it going to look like over the next decade? You know, like that's we're about to find out. <laughs> it's going to get good for us, man, because it's like, there's going to be so like, I'm looking at this, like there's so much opportunity coming down the pipeline for what we're doing and, and, and not just opportunity, but there's going to be such a call for people in our position to go rescue and save all these people that have this policy. That's why I created my, my IUL rescue or rescue my IUL.com just, just to help people that are running into these problems because it's like, dude, you'd be, you know, no, you wouldn't be shocked. You talk to people too every day. Like people watching this would probably be shocked how often people are reaching out being like, uh, you know, I mean, I, I have, I mean, we've talked about, you know, I've helped a couple NFL players get their money back, you know, from their premiums, uh, that they got stuck in these bad IULs. I've talked to, there's the MPI stuff, you know, like I talked to, I talked to, uh, to two people I have, there's a guy that I, that I, uh, that has actually recently joined Life 180 and he's passionate about helping people protect themselves against MPI because he actually lives here in Phoenix with me and he's helped two people, um, uh, win lawsuits and, and not even win lawsuits. They filed, they used attorneys and they ended up getting refunds on their premiums after two or three years each. So that's how these guys are still in business is they're just getting bailed out. The insurance companies are just sweeping it under the rug by giving money back. It's hush money. It's hush money. Totally. Because imagine like what they're doing is they're saying, if Chris Noggle buys a policy with one of these companies, and I'm not going to name the the names of the companies, but then, you know, after a couple of years, Chris realizes, holy crap, this isn't what I was sold. And Chris has proof that it wasn't what what he was sold. He can then just go to the company, just, you know, pay a lawyer a couple hundred bucks to send a a, a notice and like, make sure you have it all packaged, right? The company is just going to give you your premium back for two years as hush money just so that it doesn't turn into a bigger thing and it doesn't become publicized because that's their biggest risk. So we need to we need to be loud about this too because people are starting to get to the place where they're like, if it's so bad, you know, like somebody made a comment the other day about Doug Andrew when I was talking, like, if they're like, if Doug Andrew's so bad, how's he still in business? Well, he's not, you know, like, just go Google him, <laughs> you know, like just Google these people. And if you, then it's buyer beware. If you're like, you can make an informed decision, but it's obnoxious to me, like just the level. It, it comes back to, you know, I always like to, you know, when, when I'm talking to people about IULs and they're saying, oh, I was showing this just the other day, one of a client I've been working with for a while who never ended up doing anything. He said, hey, my friend is an advisor and he, he I think I'm going to have him help it. It just seems right. He's my friend, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, hey, listen, I, that's perfectly All fine. Right. I said, let me just sure. do you one thing. We've been working together a while. Send me the illustration. Let me just try to tell you how to make it better. What do you think mm-hmm. he said? Now, remember, I'm talking about him specially designed whole life in the infinite banking concept. It's the only thing I'm talking about. Sends over two really? IULs with a side really? fund invested in one mutual fund, one mutual fund. That was it. And then the rest in an IUL. And, and I literally went through all the fine print. And I, I said, look at page you know, 14 of 30. Mm-hmm. Look at page 22 of 30. I said, read that. That's and then insane. let me know if that feels good. And, and he decided he instantly, he's like, I can't believe I didn't read this. I'm like, why doesn't anyone read that? It's right <laughs> it's so blatantly in front of you on the illustration. The problem mm-hmm. is the illustration's 30 or 40 or 50 pages long. Why? Well, well because they got to make it super complicated because you are no way smart enough to understand this, which is why the advisor should just tell you this thing's going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. 
Chris, I got to go one more round. This yeah, let's do it. stuff pisses me off. And I've seen this <laughs> twice now. You know the people. There's a young guy on TikTok and then the old guy that we were just talking about. I don't like using uh, names because, you know, then yeah, they yeah. send us a cease and desist. They love uh, doing yeah. that. But, I don't uh, care. You know, they, they're Let both you know, taking everything we talk about and they're just reframing it. I literally like it's almost verbatim. The old guy's mm -hmm. almost verbatim what I said on a video. And then he's mm -hmm. like. And banks are the number one purchasers of life insurance in the world. They own more life mm -hmm. insurance than any yeah. other company. Mm -hmm. And he true. sells IULs. Oh, it's 100% true. But let me ask you this. Bully, bank-owned life insurance. Has yep. it ever, in all the history of banking, has it ever been IULs that mm -hmm. banks are buying? Um, I mean, IUL is a, is, is a new product. So the answer is no. And now here, here's what I'll say to this. Uh, so I always like to like answer these kinds of questions with just, uh, with common sense. Okay. So, and, and there's ways that we can get to the answers, even if there's, it's impossible to actually get the truth. So let's go this way. So I'm going to push back a little bit, right. And say, all right, in fairness, in fairness, banks don't actually disclose if they have whole life, UL, IUL, or anything like they just disclose they have cash value life insurance. Okay. So we, ha we have to acknowledge I can rebuttal that easily. Case. Okay. Okay. So we, we say that and then we go, okay, historically speaking, banks have been doing this for over a hundred years. Okay. So if that's the case, IUL didn't even exist. So we know it had to be whole life because that was the only cash value life insurance that existed. So we know banks have whole life unequivocally. Now what I do is I like to come closer to, to now and I look to look at the banks that that buy or that that were doing the the insurance backed lines of credit or the uh, cash value lines of credit, however you phrase them. Um, yeah, CV and, lines and if, of credit. Yep, CV lines of credit or IB locks or whatever. Yeah. And, and, but but here's the deal: you can go get those on whole life, and they'll lend you ninety five to one hundred percent of your cat, net cash value in the policy. I have them. If, I have them. And it and 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 there was a time a couple of years ago where that made all the sense in the world. Right now, the lines of credit lines are higher. I mean, there's some convenience or whatever. But the point to this is, is those banks won't typically lend you on, uh, give you a insurance backed line of credit or cash value line of credit on an IUL. Not okay? at all. So the banks top know three that. ones will not give right. you a CV line of credit on an and, IUL period. And here, and here's the deal. A couple that will still will only give you up to a 70, a 50 or 50 to 70% that line of credit up to the cash value. So they understand the risk. They understand the problems. And so if that's how they're handling it with you, do you think they're going to put their own money there? Or do you think they're just going to put it in a whole lot? Like they understand the risks and, you know, so, and they've been using whole life forever. And so like, you know, it is. Bravo. What it is. Like they're, that was great, man. I love the way you kind of took that back and you brought it current. And then you're like, but why would they, if this is how they're actually yeah. treating it from a lending standpoint? Yeah. So I don't know. It's just uh, you know, lies, lies, and more freaking common lies. Common sense is seldom common practice. That's what one of my mentors used to tell me. <laughs> so well, let's pivot a little away from the uh, imaginary, imaginary unicorn life products and let's go mm -hmm. into just the most boring product that has pretty much ever been created. You know, the one that we use every single day to change yep. people's lives, whole yep. life insurance. So what with whole life? would you tell somebody is a reason why they should consider that product? Forget um, about the infinite know, banking concept, but what mm. about a whole life is some of the things that you think yeah. are the most critical things people need to know? Well, let's not even talk about the technicals of the product and why um, logistically or technically it makes sense. I'm just a big believer. Like we started this conversation off talking about our, about our concerns about the economy and the political, like, situation that's going on in the world and and all these things like so I, I i just before i go here i would just say to everybody and i know if you watch chris's channel here i i know you've contemplated this already but where do you think taxes are going where do you think inflation is going where do you think national debt is going like all these different things right like so and, and so i'm just a believer i i don't believe there's one right thing or one wrong thing or there's a right way or a wrong way i just believe that we need to align our money with our values and beliefs like and and chris and i do what we do because we have a set of values and beliefs and we're aligning our money with our values and beliefs and, and we're going to execute to try to create a life that we want to live. I mean, it's, it's really that simple. Like we can, we can break it down that simply. And so why do I utilize whole life insurance is because it's in alignment with my values and beliefs. And why do I think everybody should? Well, I don't know that everybody should, but what I do think everybody should do is think about like, 
what do you prioritize in life? What do you think is going to happen in the world? What do you value? What do you believe? And really break that down. And what I know is there's this great book called The Ant and the Elephant. Uh, this guy, Vincent Pacenzi, wrote it. And he did this analogy, or there was a, he referenced a study. And in the study, he said when, when and they scanned, they did these scans of brains, you know, of, of brain activity. And when we make a conscious decision, I don't care if it's talking about budgeting, saving money, losing weight, getting out of debt, all that stuff. When we make a conscious decision, 4 million neurons a second are firing off in our brains, okay? Our subconscious mind is 4 billion neurons a second. So what happens is, if you don't believe that you're going to be successful with something, the human brain is not going to allow you to put the effort into it for you to actually have a chance of succeeding, right? And so we have to get to the place where we believe subconsciously, because the whole reason this book was called The Ant and the Elephant is because you thinking that you're going to just be able to white knuckle your way through life consciously overriding your subconscious is the equivalent of an ant sitting on the head of the elephant thinking it has a chance to steer the elephant. The elephant doesn't even know it's there, right? And so the crazy part though, is when we, when we break this down and we look at that and we go, okay, if, if that's the case, well, we have to figure out and we have to know what do we, what do we want to accomplish? Where do we want to go? What do we want our life to look like? What do we value and believe? And is our money in alignment with it? And we have to understand what we're even what we're even doing in the first place. And so I think what happens is if we get rid of all the what's the rate of return, what's the liquidity year one, what's this, what's that? And we start thinking long term because you don't solve long term problems or short term thinking. So if we start thinking long term enough and we just think about, okay, who am I? I'm married. I've got three kids. I, I love real estate investing. I run my businesses. What are my values and beliefs? I believe I am the the best investment I'm ever going to make. And I like I, I all these things that I go down through. And when you back it out, I believe that we need to save before we invest. I need to believe I believe we need to save with the purpose of investing. I believe that you are not an investor unless you have a foundation of financial safety first. You're a speculator. You know, I, so I believe, I believe all these things. And the challenge is I think people are too reactive with their money and they're just going and giving their money to other people and hoping that, you know, somebody's going to solve your problem for you. You know, like there's no financial advisor, no financial salesperson that's going to go out that you're going to give your money to that's going to be able to solve your problems. Only you can do that. Only you can do that. Right. And the challenge is, I don't care. Like we know this in, in my new book I'm writing, I talk about the five F's of life, faith, family, finances, fitness, and freedom. Right. Everybody wants freedom. That's what money is. Money's got to be a tool to get us to Ooh. financial freedom, period. Right. We, I, I think we can all agree to agree on that. Okay, if that's the case, think about it this way. With our faith, Chris, right? Like, can you outsource your success with your relationship with God, whatever that means to you? Can, can you, you can, outsource can, your success? Yeah. Can somebody else improve your relationship with God as you understand no. it? No, you have to do, you have to be in the Bible. You have to pray. You have to talk. You have to, that's a relationship that only you can manage. Can somebody outsource your success as a father, as a husband? Definitely. You know, can you... No, right? That's going to be a problem if you do, right? Can somebody outsource, can you outsource your success with your fitness, right? With yep. your health, Get up right? And run no, you got to do the pushups. You got to eat well. You got to be intentional about all that, right? I believe you can't have pure freedom without a good relationship with your higher power, without a good relationship with your family, without your health, and without a good relationship with money. Somehow, I think everybody would agree with the first three that that we have like we have to take radical self accountability if we want to be able to attain freedom in those areas. Somehow, with our money, we've been tricked, and you've been told by people like Dave Ramsey that you're too stupid to get it, that it's too complicated, right? And so, so I know this is like the longest of long answers of all time, but the reason I think everybody should get whole life insurance has nothing to do with the technicals, but it's because of the process of you going down that process of, of saving money, building your foundation, making sure that it's a self-completing plan, that your family will be taken care of, that it's gonna, that, but the whole process in that journey is gonna force you to become who you need to be with your money to live the life that you wanna live. And it's about the journey more than anything. So I love that. that's my answer. Your real estate business lives and dies by the network and the connections that you make. I mean, after all, your network, well, it's your net worth. That's what you always heard, right? If that's an area where you desire improvement, well, Private Money Club, it's for you. 
PMC saves you precious time and money by bringing the real estate world, well, right to you, right in the palm of your hand. So get in on the action like so many others have by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. And I have been telling people recently, like as they look at IBC and they teach you, you know, we teach mm -hmm. them all the beautiful things, you know, they can do all, get all the money back for their cars, pay down their debts, all the awesome things that IBC does. But I always tell them, I said, don't you even look at this if you don't understand why you're really doing this. And all that's just the fluff on the top. Why you're really doing this is the simple fact that all of us are going to face someday, you're going to die. Yeah. Every one of us. That is the one yep. certain, like IUL, whole life, all these other things we talk about, like there's variations, yeah. but there's one certain, you're all, we're, we all are going to die. And when sure. we die, we will leave behind our loved ones. Mm -hmm. My daughter, who's three and a half, I, I'm 46. I mean, what's the reality of that, folks? Start doing some math. Like, you know the reality and so do I. So when I'm no longer on earth, I want to make sure that my daughter and her kids and the, that family that I'll never know have the ability to do more, not have the ability to buy more houses or more money or this. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Have the ability to impact more people's lives through the foundation, through everything else I've set up. And you know how all that stuff happens? I bought whole life insurance. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say I bought term because term, I could outlive <laughs> that. Matter of fact, I am almost guaranteed to outlive every term policy yes a 10 a 20 a 30 year hell if they even yep. had a 40 year you are guaranteed by the actuaries to outlive the term yep only less than two percent of those terms will be paid off but with a whole life i am guaranteed to never outlive that policy so that means yep. i'm guaranteed to make sure that my family's taken care of when i'm gone and if you can't understand that and put a value on that. I don't care how much you love the other stuff. Oh, Chris, I love all that other stuff. Look at the returns. Look at this. Look at the compounding right. interest in the tax-free nature. I don't care. Do you understand why you're really doing this? Great. Right. Now let's go back to the fun stuff because that is the one certain that all the folks that we talk to have to really come to, we'll say come to Jesus, come to God. We all have to come to you yeah. know, the realization that that moment's going to happen. And that's sure. why you should do this. The I infinite banking concept, you know, it's, it's funny, Chris, you know, you love debating and so do I. <laughs> we both agree that, you know, that we, we love to debate and- sure. I went out on the biggest debate ever. I said, I'm going to debate artificial intelligence. And I did a oh. whole YouTube video on this. I okay. thought, I'm sure there's no way I can win. And I had planned out all the questions that I was going to ask AI. And then I read all the questions on the YouTube video. And then I articulated it. And when I asked, okay. when I asked AI, what? The infinite banking concept was, it was a long-winded answer, but essentially sure. it said the infinite banking concept was the whole life policy, and then it went on to some other stuff. Sure. Now, is the infinite banking concept a product at all? Is that a question for me? Yeah. I asked okay. AI, I got it wrong. So I asked Okay. You. Yeah, no, I mean, no, the answer is no. The infinite bank, I mean... The infinite banking concept is a philosophy. It's a way of, of viewing the world and handling your money, in my opinion. I know a lot of people kind of like explain it differently, um, you know, but but my mindset is that uh, it's not about the policy. It's not about positive arbitrage. It's not about uh, having a life insurance policy. I mean, it just happens to be it's a philosophy. And when you reverse engineer the philosophy, then a whole a properly designed whole life insurance policy just happens to be uh, the most natural, um, machine, actual physical machine, yeah. right. Mechanism. That's all it is because that's uh, really how we it. use it. We use it like yeah. a machine. It's an engine that, that runs the philosophy, right? I always kind of tell people like, it's a filter that you run all your decisions through, right. To figure out should, or shouldn't you do it. And that's, that's the way I look at it. I love it. You know, and when people ask me what the infinite banking concept is, I just tell them it's the process of taking back the banking functions that you've given away back into mm -hmm. your life. You take back yeah. control of the banking functions because that's essentially all we're doing, but you, it's a philosophy and it's mm -hmm. a process. And, and oh, right. I, I've recently been saying, you know what, you don't like whole life because Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman, and all these people say whole life is bad. It's expensive. It's overpriced. Great. Let's just yeah. eliminate the whole life. 
and let's yeah. just perform the process. Let me teach you that and just do it using a bank account. Do it using sure. your favorite money market. That's great. You sure. will become more wealthy by the simple process. Mm -hmm. So if we yeah, can, if sure. we can all come to consensus to take the product out that everybody wants to disagree or agree with, and we just understand the process, the philosophy, it will make everybody's life better. And then yeah. all we then have to agree, this is where logical thinking comes, is if we add the whole life to the process, mm -hmm. you will have more money by simple mathematics and for sure. that benefit when you die. So like then it becomes a much easier thing to help people understand. So I've, mm -hmm. I've literally just been saying, hey, without the whole life, let's just show you how this works. And then let's just mm -hmm. add, you know, it's kind of like, let's put the turbocharger on the engine and then let's run the well, engine without it. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that makes sense. I think, you know, one of the challenges with that, um, not with what you said, but with just the overall, I think, perspective and misunderstanding about infinite banking comes from, Listen, and I'm guilty of it too. I think every every one of us is guilty about some clickbait, you know, kind of content where, you know, there's a thumbnail or a title or like an intro to a video talking about do what the wealthy do to get well, you know, like use infinite banking or use whole life insurance like the wealthy, like whatever. But the problem is people become confused because wealthy people didn't use whole life to get wealthy. They didn't need whole life to get wealthy. Was whole life an accelerant maybe? For them to do it sure but really wealthy people you're not going to get rich wealthy because of whole life insurance not you're all. going to create wealth because of your ability to create value in the world period whatever way that looks right and so like you're going to create wealth through real estate through building businesses through good investing through like things of that nature a properly designed whole life policy and the infinite banking concept, the philosophy is going to help you have a filter that you can flow your decisions through on investing in that based on how you've saved up and built your foundation to actually be a good investor and not a speculator. But on the back end of it, the whole life policy there is the backstop to your wealth to make sure not just that you make it because plenty of people have made wealth and then lost it. Fair enough. And then there's a lot more of those about to happen. We call them yep. the rich folks, the, the play yep. rich kind of people. There's going to yep. be a lot of people going broke soon. Yep. Yep. And, and so the whole life policy being there and, and utilizing infinite banking philosophies is the backstop to everything to make sure that not only do you not lose it, but it's put in place to make sure generationally that your family is taken care of, right? That and I always beautiful. call it, I always call it a self-completing plan because let's face it, we're doing other strategies. I mean, I'm I'm doing what I'm doing. You're doing what you're doing. We're both trying to accomplish pretty big things. If we got killed tomorrow on, a, on my flight to where I'm going, like, I mean, if I didn't have life insurance, well, then my family is stuck with whatever I've done to this point in time. But a whole by by utilizing a whole life insurance as my savings mechanism instead of notice I didn't say investment as my savings mechanism instead of a bank, I'm creating a self-completing vehicle because if I die with that, the whole life policy completes itself. So I always say whole life is the only product in the world that will make sure what you want to happen will happen when you want it to happen, whether you're here to see it or not. If you live a long, healthy, happy, fruitful life, you're going to outperform the bank from the saving. You're going to do what you're going to do on the investment side, on business creation side, all that stuff. But if you die early, it's going to complete itself and no other vehicle is going to allow you to do have both things at the same time. I love what you just said there. It's a self-completing piece to your financial future. It, it, it's exactly what yep. it is because whatever goes in that machine, that whole life can never, ever be worth less than what it, it is, the period. Right. And, and yep. then when you die, it becomes worth a whole lot more for your family. It's it's such an unbelievable machine. I love that you said that because, you know, a lot of people go out there and, and this this is something and I kind of just want to hit on this one a little bit. How often do you see people or come across clients that you're talking to and you, you're you talking about their debts and then you're talking about their assets and their income and you see that they've got some money saved and then on the other side of their liabilities, you see they got a bunch of credit cards, but yet yeah, they're exactly. asking you about investing in the stock market. They're asking you right. about investing in real estate or or these uh -huh. speculative or, or just investments that they're looking at, yet they've got the best way to make money guaranteed in front of them through their debts. If they just paid off their credit cards using that savings that they were going to invest in risky assets, they would yeah. make, I mean, whatever their credit card rate is, 20, 25, mm -hmm. 29% guaranteed. Totally. And I can't yep. understand how 
logically people can't see that, that the <laughs> fastest wealth that anyone can make is through uh, the debts that they have now, because most people have those debts. And, and why would you invest money and not pay off a credit card when the return on the credit card is far greater than probably just about any investment you can? Is it really that we've gone so far down this rabbit hole of the bull market that people literally think that it's impossible to lose money? I, I can't rationalize it. Bro, it's it's insane. Like, so credit cards, I mean, think about it this way. Like uh, the the freeing up, ca ca life is about cash flow, right? So not only are you going to get better rates of return, you're going to open up cash flow. Um, you're you're going to free yourself. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're not debt free, as we go into this chaos that I would say is coming one way or the other, you're going to be in trouble, you know? Nice. And I think you're going to either be positioned to thrive and 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 be just flooded with opportunity. Uh, if you're prepared for it, or you're going to be uh, among the masses that just get massacred, and it's going to be ugly. And, you know, it's interesting, because I'm, you know, I we've talked, I'm I'm going to the DR, right? Like, and my wife and I are taking our kids there and whatever. But one of the things that I've been doing is looking for a good credit card that that is better for international usage, right? Because I'm obviously going to be international, I want the best best protections, I want like all this stuff, right? And so like, because a lot of these credit cards, when you're a US resident overseas, you get, you know, better insurances, better coverage, like medical coverage baked into it, all that stuff when you're overseas. And so looking at this, one of the things that I noticed on these credit cards, I didn't like, it's insane how much credit card rates have gone up right now. Like a lot of these rates, like as I'm just researching card after card after card, 36.74% is the APR on some of these cards that I'm seeing. Like as I was, and it's like, did you How, just say 36.74 36. I saw as I was looking through them? And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Who in their right mind would like, it's insanity. All right. We're now we got to go to Google average <laughs> credit card interest rate. I thought that was usury rates. Let's see. The average credit card interest rate is 22.86% uh, as right now. So that's, that's the average, average. But they can go high. Now, now we're going to look at the highest. All right. So let's see what the highest is. <laughs> that's... I've never done this. Highest interest rate on credit cards. There is no limit on credit card interest. You're absolutely right. I thought they were no, bound by rate. It says usury refers to lending at a rate of interest that is so high as to be unreasonable. Mm. But yet there's no limit on apparently. credit card interest rates. It's right here. Top apparently, down. apparently, um, you know, credit cards are the business to get into, guys. If you have the ability to do it, you, wow, you need to get I into it. I cannot believe that. I did not know that. I always thought they were capped to like 29.99 because of usury. But literally right here tonight, I am seeing that that is not the case. Well, Insanity, folks, man. like that is how we you go. build wealth. Like if you've got credit cards, like stop looking just at the investments, right just pay the credit cards down, yep. but don't just pay the credit cards down. When you mm -hmm. pay them down, figure out how much monthly you no longer owe the credit card, take that mm -hmm. exact amount and then shift where that money goes. Obviously, I'm going to tell you to put it into a specially designed whole life or mm -hmm. take the money from the whole life to pay it down and use the mm -hmm. infinite banking. But let's just... Go back to the infinite banking concept. Let's say you took money from your savings, you paid off a credit card, you took the amount you used to give to the credit card, and you then opened up a second bank account, another checking account that paid 3%, mm -hmm. and you just deposited that money in there. How much did you just make? Well, if average rate was like 24% on the credit cards, we'll just go with that, plus the bank today is paying you three, how much did you make? Yeah, add the two. Can you make that consistently, persistently, every single year, on your 401k, on your brokerage account, in your real no estate. No way. No effing. No way. That's that's what people need to understand, that you need to build your financial foundation, which includes getting out of debt, then building your foundation of having six to 12 months of income for emergency, and then building enough safe money for an opportunity fund. Because as Nelson Nash always said, the more money you seem to have in whole life policy, the more opportunity just has a way of tracking you down. And it, access to capital is, is king, guys. Isn't that the truth? You mm -hmm. know, I, I literally sometimes I'm just like, you know, maybe I'm just getting really lucky because opportunities just keep showing up. And it's just it's, like, I, I don't know, maybe Nelson was on to something that like taps into a universal law, kind of like, you know, all yeah. these other universal laws, like 
Something happens when you build money up in your cash value. I don't know why or how, but opportunity just presents itself at right about just the perfect time every time. I don't know. That's a bit foo-foo for, for sure. some of you, but yeah. I don't know. But Chris brought it up. I'm just revealing yeah. it. It, it, is, it is very bizarre. I got to tell you. I, I I like it. Listen, I, I mean, I think what we do, uh, there's a lot of, uh, we could talk about a lot of foo-foo things to it. I'm a firm believer that by having your money in a whole life policy and doing what we do is going to help you live longer because you're going to have more peace of mind and more people die because of cancer and cancer is caused by stress and all these different things that we talk about. I mean, how many people do you know, Chris, that, you know, went to school, got a job, invested in their 401k, worked 35, 40 years, got to retirement, and then bang, died two, three years later? Uh, too many. Uh, wow. And it's too a many. sad, sad too many, thing. Right? Too many, right? It's super sad, right? And I just firmly believe that, you know, if 95% of people are hitting retirement without the ability to maintain their standard of living, I don't know about you, but like, that causes a lot of stress. That causes a lot of free radicals running throughout our body. That causes a lot of uneasy things in the body that are going to lead to health ailments that are going to lead to a premature death. And so, you know, I, I just, I truly, I, sometimes I joke with people, they go, what do you do? And I tell them, well, I help people live longer. Well, how do you do that? You know, and and it's it's a long answer, obviously, but like, it's, you got to have fun with this stuff sometimes. You know, I think, um, I think the biggest challenge, you know, that with with life insurance agents that sell whole life that focus on the infinite banking is they get too geeked out on the numbers behind it and they're not focused on enough about why we do what we do and and the the real life impact that you have the ability to make on people and with people. I totally agree with that. And uh I mean there's the number one cause of divorce is mm -hmm. money. Yep. And, you know, like you just said, uh, yeah. people retire and they, they drop dead, just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, they get all these illness illnesses and just, it's just, it's weird. But yeah. the other thing too, that I, I, I'm very scared of is because we've been in the longest bull run in history, oh, yeah. it, it, people literally have gotten immune to what a recession is and what it could be. I mean, like, you know, COVID happened and the market tanked and then it just rebounded and people are like, Oh, see, it was, it was just a little thing. And that's how it is. And the fed's always going to step in and bail us out. And I think there's so many people right now, because if you look at baby boomers or even like the silent generation, there are some of the mm -hmm. silent generation still working, but the baby boomers primarily, like they're right at retirement sure. age right now, mm -hmm. right at and, retirement and, age. Yeah. Yep. So Within three to ten years, most baby boomers are are going to probably retire or you know take that next step in their lives. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's going to happen at exactly the wrong time because yeah. the markets are going to fall out from underneath them. Their four hundred one ks are going to go from these big robust numbers that they got so accustomed to down to these these really small numbers. It's yeah. called, and then uh, they're going to they're going to retire because they're just done with it, and they're going to start drawing it out, and they're going to realize something that their advisor should have told them all along. It's called the drawdown effect. You will never ever 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 recover. You mm -hmm. won't. You will run out of money. You will be living off the system, and you will have your hand out. I don't want to say begging, but essentially asking for help. And that isn't because of anyone failing you. That is because you failed to see what is coming and you failed to plan appropriately for that. And and you know what? Now I'm going to go back to you asked me a question earlier. Why should everybody have whole life? Because no other financial tool in the world will grow with you the way that whole life will grow. Like it literally helps you differently at every stage of your life. Think about it this way. If we if you agree, once again. I'm not going to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. I'm going to ask people watching here a couple of questions. If you agree that you should have an emergency fund, which I think that's just good adulting. Is that fair to say? We need to have some liquid Very accessible good. cash, right? So let's just agree to agree that we need to have an emergency fund. And let's just say it's six months. I would say bare minimum, the question now is, where do you keep that emergency fund? And for the sake of argument, let's just call it a whole life policy, right? Because we all know what we know that that's the case. And if you want to challenge, we both got videos that will show you why that's the case. Okay. If we know that, let's go back. A lot of people say, well, I don't need whole life insurance or life insurance in my 20s. Well, what you need to do is start saving money and start building your financial foundation. So in your 20s, from like 20 to 30, 35, use whole life to build your foundation. And, and you can start using it for investing in whatever you want at that point in time. When you get married and start having kids when late 20s, early, mid 30s, maybe early 40s, depending on who you are, now you have life insurance and you did it when you were younger. So your cost of insurance is going to be less. You're going to be much better positioned. 
And so now your cash value is going to keep growing. So when you go to have your kids get to college, and if you want to do that, which I think would be a waste of money personally, but like if you want to do that, go nuts, go nuts. Uh, Otherwise, you got money there to invest in real estate or other cash flow assets or anything of that nature. You could self-finance your cars. You could do all these things. It gives you all this control. That's in your 40s. Now you hit your 50s. Your kids are out out of college. You go there. You're you're expanding. You hit your retirement years. By the way, now you have the living benefits. If you become, become critically, chronically, or terminally ill, you have access to control the medical directive in your life. I share the story about my father-in-law diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer November 4th of 2020 at 76 years old, 75 years old. And they gave him three months to live because of the ability to accelerate a death benefit and have a quarter million dollars of cash tax-free accelerating the death benefit. He's still alive today playing golf four days a week, seeing his grandkids all the time because we're able to do things that insurance companies wouldn't allow us to do, right? And so we control that. You have the living benefits. And in retirement, you have this pool of capital. If you understand anything to do with sequence of returns risk, that's a volatility buffer that you leverage on down years so the rest of your assets can perform better. So there's not another asset in the world that's going to be able to be one asset that will grow with you, solve different problems at different stages of your life. And so it, when you look at it like that, if you, once again, it's not that you should or shouldn't do that. It's just, I challenge every single person watching this to think about where are my values? What do I really value in this world? What do I believe the future looks like? And if you look at that and do an assessment, I challenge you to then look at the attributes and the benefits of whole life insurance and not buy it. Folks, all I'm going to say is that was epic right there. That was epic. So epic that what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a plug to Chris's <laughs> his YouTube channel. I'm putting it up. For those of you that can see this, this is his YouTube channel. You just go to YouTube, type in Life 180. He's got, I don't even know how many videos, but tons and tons of videos about everything he's been talking about. So make sure you go here and watch his channel, subscribe to his channel, and also go to his website, life180.com, because there's even more stuff on there. I had to give it a plug because you got so much golden content (laughs) on that YouTube that everybody needs to be there. So I got to ask it as we kind of get to the end of this episode. Yeah. Yeah. What is the next five years going to be for you? What is your, your one high arching goal for yourself and for your family in five years? Man, that's, you know what? Uh, Freedom, like real freedom, true freedom, uh, sovereignty to, to be able to um, just move about the world as we see fit. You know Um, we're, we're taking our kids out of the school system. We're homeschooling them starting in January. Uh, we're moving to an island in the Caribbean. Um, you know, I'll be coming back and forth and speaking at events and stuff in the U.S. But for the most part, I mean, that's home base. Um, you know, we we want to build something really cool down there. We, we're building a community, um, and and that's really that's really what the next five years is. Is you know, we're building Life 180, um, building the community of people. Um, you know, because what we're building down there is a retreat center. You know, I w- I mean, I'm. I was going to do this offline, but I even want to invite you to do some of your money school stuff down there and do retreats down there because we have a whole facility to do it. You know what I mean? Help me in. Just like, please make sure it's when the surf is firing. It will. We'll make it happen, bro. <laughs> so like, you know, there's there's this kind of stuff like my my. What we've been called to, because my wife and I have done uh, two weeks of ayahuasca retreats this year, and I've done 10, 10 ayahuasca ceremonies this year. And um, I could tell you that I am a different person today than I was even seven months ago through those experiences. And um, what that has done for me is it's shown me what I really truly value and what I believe. And um, it's it's highlighted to me where I need to, and, and I think most people that know me would say, wow, you're a pretty bold guy, Chris, you know, like whatever, but it makes me really internally see like where I need to even level up and take it to the next level and go all in on my convictions and beliefs. Um, and that's what this move is all about, um, is creating this, this place where my family can be better off, where we can add more value to the world, where we can create a community for people to come to from all over the world that share these values. It's a place of healing. It's a place of education. It's a place of collaboration. It's a, you know, and so the next five years I see just building that and, and doing so with amazing people being free, um, and, and creating more and more collaborations where we can create win-win scenarios for as many people as possible. I love that. You know, freedom, 
you know, when, when all of you go to work every day, go to your businesses, go out there and do what you do, just realize you're not working for a dollar. You're not working for money. You're working for freedom. The second you start placing the value on what it is you're truly trying to do, I always like to say your perfect day, but it always mm -hmm. comes back to freedom. And if you can't yeah, outline what your perfect day looks like, and your perfect day will change maybe once every six months, every year, every couple of years, your perfect day has to change. But if you can visualize that perfect day from the second your eyes open to the second your eyes close, you yeah. will understand what it takes to get there. And that will be the freedom that you will seek. So every time you go to work, you won't be upset that you're working nine to five. You'll be happy that you got there an hour early and stayed two hours late because every time you solve more problems, you get closer to your perfect day. I think too many Amen. people are focused on the time frame they work, trying to work less and trying to cut back on what they have and what they get out of life when we should be striving to have more and do more and be more in life. And that only happens if you can describe your perfect day. So folks, take yeah. everything that the Chris is, because that's <laughs> the Chris, Chris squared. Chris, Chris yeah, the squared. Chris squared. Take everything we gave you today, you know, apply only what you need, take the rest and just throw it right out. We had yeah. some fun, but figure out what freedom is to you and yep. chase it with everything you and your family have, because that is where you'll find calm peace. With that being said, Chris, where do people find out more about you outside of your website and outside of YouTube? Uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram. I've started doing more on there at real Chris Kirkpatrick. Um, I'm there and uh, cashflowhackingbook.com as well is, uh, is you can get a free copy of my book there. And any, any questions, I, I guess, email Chris at life180.com. That's the easiest way. Love it. So folks, we'll All put right. it in the description to get a copy of his book for free, to go to his YouTube channel, to go to his website. And also, if for some reason at this late in this episode, there are a couple of you IUL folks out there, hit Chris up with the IUL challenge because, hey, he'll Let's put some money in your pocket, but you won't win. So <laughs> check it out, folks. Here Thanks for joining us for another Thanks, episode guys. of the Money School Podcast. Chris, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me, brother. This is fun.